Welcome, guys. Welcome to the process. It's Wednesday night. Jermaine, what's up? What's going on, brother? What's going on? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Let's pay some bills right now. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. And shout outs to my sponsors, CalZero.com and Sterile Education. Go download that app and CalZero.com. Put that code in the process and you'll get a $17.99 discount. And by the way, guys, one more thing. Please head over to our YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. Use your little pinky finger, hit that bell. You will be notified every time we have new content coming out. Don't forget. So tonight we're going to do something really, really different, really special. I haven't seen anyone do it thus far. Have you seen anybody do what we think we're going to do I, I haven't people are okay. a little scared to, to to take this step out into the <laughs> to the open that you're ready to take so let i i, I want to see what what we do here all right so so some people keep talking about wait i don't have a platform i want to ask a question i want to say something but i can't do it so tonight on hot topics what we're going to do we're going to share the link to the show with you guys so if you're on linkedin look in the comments the link to the show is there if you're on youtube the link to the comments is also there so swing over to that youtube page or scroll down or scroll down to your linkedin page the process podcast and uh, click that link and come on stage and uh, if you have a question or you just want to say, share some information come on we'll see let's see who who's brave enough to come on click on the link and come on if you can if you want if you're brave enough come on all right so let's get into hot topics brother what's going on on your in your neck of the woods as they as they would say well you know it we're, we're kind of busy on our neck of the woods but it, it's a little tempered looking at what's going on around the industry with uh you know a lot of us got in the health care or stayed in the health care because of the relative safety um, as far as job security. And a lot of people around the country are feeling some post-pandemic uh, repercussions as hospitals are laying off staff and closing. And, you know, that, that always makes me sad because, I, you know, we all know how it is. You get comfortable, you get settled in. And then now, through no effort of your own, now you're, you're back out there on the market. And, and you have to make some big decisions about where you want to live and, and all that stuff. So I've been watching that segment in the market. Um, but at the same time, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. Hey, Janine, what's going on, Danny? I, I was talking to Danny about this crazy idea I had. I see Alexandra is, is, is on here. What's yeah, up, yeah, shout out to the Conjure Institute. Danny, what's up? What's up? What's going on? Janine. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you one of these days, Janine. One of these days. One of these good days. I don't know why Janine is not on the show. <laughs> she needs to click the link and come up. Come on. Oh yeah, Janine, click that link and come on. 
Click that link. You're on LinkedIn. Scroll right down. Click that link and come on. Let's hear what you have to say. You're probably in scrubs right now, but still, come on. <laughs> it's still relatively early on, on her side. Mm. So, yeah, I went through uh, Becca's report and there were a number of hospitals laying off people and eliminating positions and CEOs are leaving, CEOs are switching, <laughs> switching hospitals. There's a, from AM newsletter, Cleveland Clinic CEO takes a new job in um, Presbyterian New York as the COO, Chief Operating Officer. So people are moving around, people are seeing, well, things are a little, you know, turbulent on their end, so they're finding greener pastures. So basically everybody's not, from technicians to CEOs, you know, everybody's kind of feeling the pinch and finding somewhere, like a lot of technicians now are traveling because the departments, they're not getting raises. Um, things are a little, you know, the atmosphere is a little different now and people need more financially to sustain, you know, their needs. So everybody's doing it, guys, not just the technicians. So. And, 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 and speaking of needs, I just wanted to shout out um, and, and send some prayers and, and donations uh whichever platform you like to to donate is uh towards the relief efforts in florida um you know it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been but for the people who are affected it's as bad as it can be so um you know if you have some extra thoughts and prayers i know you can send those but also think about reaching out through whatever platform you wish to donate to, to help those relief efforts Yes, guys. If you know, I think Red Cross definitely very secure for taking donations. Um, yeah. Donate to Red Cross, and um, if you know someone, send them a package. Um, go to Amazon, get their address. If they, hopefully their home is still intact, get their address and send them, you know, a care package, something they may they may need to um, to um, get back on their feet. And you always have cash apps, <laughs> cash app on those money. <laughs> you always do that too. So, um, and yeah, just looking at things, uh, kind of happening, you know, in Florida, you expect a, a, a increase in infection after any hurricane, and so typically, if it's unable to be treated by uh, medical means, it may have to be treated by surgical means. So that could cause a, a uptick in those areas that were affected by the hurricane. I know our, our family in the Northeast is still raining like cats and dogs as the low pressure has settled off over there. Janine is in decon. Yeah, Janine is in decon. So Janine, flush and brush. That's all I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll brush and flush. I mean, I'll repeat, you know. So, guys, um, if you want to come on the show and you always, you always wanted to come on the show, shout out to Omar. Click the link. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. And it's in LinkedIn. So, if you always wanted to come on the show, this is your opportunity. Guys, and I want to also remind you that the process is having this marathon on Sunday, October 9th, right? So what Sunday, October 9th, you might ask? Sunday, October 9th is the first day of sterile processing week. So we're going to bring it in with a bang, with a 12-hour marathon. So a marathon, not meaning we're going to run for 12 hours. Get out of your mind. I can't <laughs> So I mean, that's what I thought. <laughs> but we're gonna have a live show for 12 hours straight. So we're incorporating education in there, and you're gonna see a lot of the who's who in self processing, all the big names, some new folks you never heard of. You're gonna have some knowledge, some new information about you know what's going on with um, HSPA, what's going on in the industry, what to look out for. Tune in Sunday, October 9th. All right. That's my shameless plug for now. I will be bringing it up. But click on that link, come on the show, and share your thoughts. 
Don't be shy. So let me start it off by piggybacking off of something that you said is um, it's, it's about that time uh, for HSPA savings. And I did a presentation on this and, you know, years and years ago, because what I'm telling you is, you know, a lot of people are, they, they might say, my hospital won't fund us to go or my hospital won't let me go. So first of all, if you put in your time off now and it's not, it has nothing to do with HSPA, it's going to get approved. It's going to get approved, right? Because nobody else, they don't, not going to request it until it's time for HSPA. Start socking away that money, right? Um, I think the, the registration is pretty reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so you can divide it into little chunks, you know, maybe a, a Christmas fund or if your bank has a, way you to open an account that you can't you can only go in to get to it start socking away that money twenty dollars a week will get you to hspa let me all right so shameless plug again you continue (laughs) and so so now you're not going to probably be able to stay at the convention hotel that's okay there's nothing but debauchery going on. Denard is there having his hotel parties. All the big wigs are having these these private hotel parties only the cool people Why are Why you have to share all that information? They don't but, have to know about that. But, <laughs> you know, you could you could get a hotel that's, say, 15, 12 miles away. They don't know anything about the convention. And so their prices are their same regular prices that it would be during that time. You stay there you get a Lyft or Uber into the convention. And then, you know, there's so many free events, especially the open and night party. That is wild. Like mm-hmm. it is as much food as you can eat, but the networking, here's why it's worth it, worth the investment. Uh, when you are an SPD nerd, sometimes you think you're talking to the wall or just talking to yourself or going to free content like this. Uh, in, in maybe in like a vacuum. So I this is your opportunity. When you meet the other fellow SPD nerds, it's life-changing because you're like, right now you're like, I'm the only one. Mm-hmm. But when you meet other SPD nerds and you're sitting out on a veranda at 10 o'clock at night talking about uh, how you're going to change the way you do your assignments for decon and the, and and st- and the assembly. Now you don't have to reinvent the wheel. All the problems that you're facing, somebody else has faced them and figured them out. And I don't mean some industry bigwig or the people who are speaking. I mean a lot of the great conversation I had with just regular attendees. Well, we do our thing like this, and I'm like totally still in that. So I, I, I encourage you if you are always waiting for your hospital to fund you and your hospital to a month before HSPA when now you can't go because the people are going are going. Here's the opportunity now to sock some money away and, and pay for it because you don't have to pay in full. I mean, people walk up and pay at the convention. So, you know, they missed the early bird price. So you don't want to miss the early bird price, but it's just an opportunity. If you fund your way, down there, you will not regret it. And shout out to our LinkedIn viewer. I'll get back to what you just said. Um, well, I have for CS, um, CSP week this year. The employees, the, oh, will get all expenses paid trip to who's that? Um, I know that, 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 that LinkedIn user needs to reveal themselves. Yeah, that yeah, but outstanding. Sure. that's outstanding. I mean, yeah, first of all, yeah. I want to put in an application, but that is an outstanding, goodness gracious, that is an incredible uh, reward for the employee of the year. And I'm telling you, that employee of the year will be so excited. Make sure you put in for the scholarships are, that are available through the HSPA uh, foundations. The number of, you know, when you say, well, I don't put in because I never get selected. But guess what? A bunch of other people are thinking like that. So it's a higher hit rate than you can believe. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. that's Ebo, my boy. 
Who's that? Ebo, that's who that oh, is. Oh, Ebo, what's up? What's up? I met Ebo a few weeks ago. Now that I know it's Ebo, that's a very. <laughs> I met Ebo a few weeks ago at um a little seminar in um in PA. Um, yeah. Nice yeah. meeting you, brother. Speaking um, of which, I'm gonna be all up and through P PA in the next few uh, few weeks. All right, all right, all right. And um, guys, um, don't forget to treat your team. You know, get them a little something, not just the regular pizza. You know, the dry, flaky pizza. Get them a little something extra. Get some Popeyes. Get some Chick Fil A. You know, if you're on the East Coast, get a little Wawa. You know. Get a little something different, you know, make them feel a little special. Give them some gift cards to some nice spots. Applebee's. Um where? Where? Wine and spirits. You know, give them a little something different. Give them a little something different. You know, so guys, treat your team. And guess whose week it is this week? Whose week is it? It is. You know what? I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to go back in my Google. I think it's uh, materials management or supply chain week. All right. Hey, that's supply hey. chain week this that's, week. That's where my so, heart is. That's where my heart is. So shout out to all my supply chain folks. Um, thank you for all that you do. Because without you, we wouldn't get the boys. We wouldn't get the bios. We wouldn't get the rap. You know, we wouldn't get any of that. We wouldn't get the basins. We wouldn't get the stuff to... If you pull case cards, you wouldn't get the soft goods to pull those cards. You wouldn't get your repairs back. Like they, you know, they basically keep everything alive. They're the conduit to everything running correctly. So shout out to my um, supply chain folks. You know, and y'all get paid yeah, a lot of there, money. There are a lot of people, there are a lot of supply chain people with SPD certifications because there is no equivalent on their side and so especially uh surgical supply chain some hospitals those those guys pick the soft goods for cases but at the very least a lot of them stock up the or with the consumables and those high price goods um that are up in the operating room so there's a lot of interconnection and some a lot of uh managers and directors have both reporting to them so um shout out to our supply chain partners um i made a lot of hand supply chain I, I actually love supply chain you like supply chain oh mm. yeah. yeah so yeah. but also shout out to all my supply chain managers who manage spd and shout out to all my spd managers who manage supply chain so we know there's a learning curve just bear with those managers please they didn't start off in those areas so give them a little time you know to get it together. Who's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's up to us to help them learn our world and then take some of the principles from their world to our world. It wasn't until I, I really worked in supply chain and I started managing supply chain people um, that I, I realized how important it was to do FIFO for instrument trades, right? Because, yeah. you know, the easy thing is that you just stack the instrument trays on top. So you made some changes. You did all this good stuff. But that tray at the bottom, it not only doesn't have the up-to-date count sheet and contents, it hasn't been QA'd in two years now. So <laughs> even FIFO can keep it fresh. And then you can, you can use that opportunity when you're doing your quality program, which I know you're pulling trays off the shelf. Pull those old trays off the shelf. See what's going on with those. And then that'll force that kind of recirculation, that first in, first out, so that you're always using the oldest product uh, so that you can remain in compliance with the rigid container um, um, and or wrap uh, shelf life policy. So that's a, that's a whole nother opportunity for accreditation finding if you don't have a hospital policy that makes sense or you don't have a hospital policy that speaks to how long you're going to let stay, stay, stay on the shelf and my supply chain experience said let's let's pull the put those older trays first and we won't have to worry about that
And you know what, especially supply chain on that side, you know what not following FIFO does? It wastes money. Because at the back of the shelf, you have expired goods, and that's basically just going down the drain if you can't return it. So FIFO is definitely, definitely important in supply chain. And following that in your SP department is definitely a plus. Um, some people can't even follow that because they're so busy because <laughs> everything is going off the shelf anyway. And when you have a full supply, it's right. hard to follow it because everything, all your cameras, you don't have enough cameras, you don't have enough auto sets, you know, but there are the, those trades where you know that thing has been on the shelf for you have two, you only need one once a year. You, you just got to rotate it, you know, and the one you have that's a year old, it has a hole in it or something wrong with it. The tip's probably busted. Something's wrong with that. So I'm um, trying to reprocess that or get it used in time. Wood from your SP professional. <laughs> <laughs> so what else is going on in, in, in your life? What's going on up there? What are we thinking about? Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking more and more about the impact of off-sites on... Oh, boy on on uh you know traditional step standard process sterile processing department and mm. you know, what that looks like in the future man okay so if i were not me what i would say is i don't like off sites all right i'm just gonna tell, tell me about it. talk to me talk to but me but i'm not me i'm just speaking from somebody else's point of view right now so don't judge me <laughs> <laughs> I don't think okay let, let me just say one thing if you're gonna spend that extra money on on instrumentation anyway you might as well spend it in the department you already have right don't you think so but because most most outside processing facilities end up spending the money to get extra instrument trays anyway that is a that is a part of the 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 process of going to an off-site um place and i think in general uh instrument quality is not our number one problem it is instrument capacity and the productivity uh it, it is an issue when you're constantly being bombarded with change request and 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 what have you uh and i know as a as a sterile processing tech a surgical tech and a surgical first assistant that's just a part of what happens when you have a, a um a, a standing healthcare facility what offsite does is gives you some flexibility so that you can uh you can you can process just a lot more productive it can help you with these standardization processes that will never happen. You got a hospital with five systems and everybody agrees that we should standardize to one tray for ortho and one tray for lap, but it never happens. And so when you borrow from the other place, it's like a whole new world. You're like, what in the world is this? So, I mean, it can help with that. There's a lot of efficiencies in offsite processing. Um, it, it doesn't, one of the myths is that it, it deletes or uh, takes away the need for on-site processing. There's still going to be a need for on-site processing and a staff to manage the receipt and storage of those trays. But off-site uh, off facility hour over hour uh, just can produce way more more products than you can in a in a standing yeah. facility. And I agree with your points, but. I believe some facilities that are going to offsite or um are creating offsite facilities for their inventory, they they may be looking at it the wrong way. That's why they're not having success. Sometimes you may need an offsite facility for your storage, but not for your reprocessing. If you focus on your reprocessing within your the within your facility and have an outside not you know not too distant from your you know your main facility, but if you have a storage facility versus a reprocessing facility on the outside 
and restructure your department for reprocessing and create a storage facility, I think that would work. Because you still have this tra transport process, but the thing is you'll only be transporting clean or sterile instrumentation. So I think that's another way of thinking. Instead of going outside to reprocess, reprocess inside and store outside. Mm. I, 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 I think you're... I think you're holding on to that on site because you're thinking of it as it personal to you. But no. when you go to the 30,000 foot, you're not losing any employees, right? You need fewer people on site because you should be just shipping stuff out and it should be being reprocessed at the so point of use care check, send it out, and then send it back that group at an offsite one they have a much higher retention rate than at a at a a, a a healthcare facility and so you do the math and figure out why that is i've heard of know. i've heard of burnout at these facilities also i've heard of burnout at a couple of those facilities yeah well i think burnout is inherent in any industry that you produce products at the rate that we need to produce products so i think when you describe what we do to people outside our industry, you know, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do that. They're like, gosh, you guys must make $100,000 because the only people who thinks of it as just dishwashing are the people inside our own facility. From an outside manufacturer, they're like, you guys, okay, desoil the instruments and then you guys are the same ones that assemble the instruments and then they have to be the specific specifications. You have to check them and then you put them into a machine that sterilize. Like they, when you're explaining the process, they are just amazed at what we do. And it, it is a, a, a very, a very um, linear and broad thing that can produce burnout. So there burnout, and what we do doesn't surprise me. I see surgeons getting bur burnt out. I used to see first assistants getting bur burnt out. I used to see uh, surgical technicians, uh, se surgical technologists, excuse me, fellow surge tech, and uh, OR nurses getting burnt out. So uh, all of us are see patients at such a high rate that it can cause burnout. So uh going back to this off-site situation right um so i i i i was listening i was in the the um the amy group where we were, we were discussing um transport i i didn't hear you speaking up man i was in there man i was a i was a fly on the wall i just wanted to listen i didn't want to ruffle no feathers i did um did um drop a couple um messages in the chat but so every, every, everyone was focused on, oh, when the truck gets there, somebody needs to offload it, blah, 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 blah. But how are you going to determine your process in time? So if you, if you, if you, if your transport time and your sitting time, because most, if you look at it, right, in normal freight delivery, right, you would get stuff like if you're, okay, you, you worked in, um, materials management, um, supply chain. Stuff would get to the dock and stay, sit on the dock for hours before it got into the department, right? Before it got scanned in, right? True. So Fact. I'm imagining the same issues with instruments coming in. They get off the, the truck and they're going to sit there till or John come, gets off for lunch um, or somebody in Dick and Tam could dig down and come back there and pull those carts in. So my suggestion would be to document the time that tray or that those trays left the original facility the facility of use and got to the department so you actually document those times you could also document the drive time and then document that other um the time from the dock to decontamination so you know if you're you you kind of could equate or estimate what instrumentation you need to process in a different way when you get to decontamination. So if some, if you, let's say you, you transport in scopes, which I doubt, but let's say you transport in scopes and they're sitting there for three hours, you'd know, Hey, I need to soak it for a certain yeah, period of time yeah, yeah. before. But, 
I, I mm-hmm. think that's an important part, but hold on. Let's back up super super Denard. So there are some people watching who are like, what are they talking about? <laughs> what which Amy discussion, which Amy group are you talking about? So tell us a little bit what you're talking about. Um, so we can can share because our 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 commitment um starting this year and moving forward we want to crowdsource from everybody in the group that doesn't have a voice so you are one of the elite people who have a voice you got the link so rewind a little bit tell us a little bit what we're talking about i i forgot what group it was i forgot i actually forgot my bad i forgot what group it was i was in a couple i was swinging around i was in a couple groups but that group i sat in for a while, they were, they were speaking. Um, the conversation was on transporting um, soil so, instrumentation from uh, 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 your main hospital facility um, of use and transporting it, transporting it to your reprocessing department or facility offsite. So, so the conversation was on getting those instrumentation to decontamination in a timely manner asap you know soon as possible whatever whatever they, whatever they want to get it to decontam quickly so the verbiage i heard was was never about documenting the time so that you could reprocess it in the time because i have certain i have used give you uh, a set time for having soil bio burden um you know from use to reprocess and you may have to change your reprocessing strategy processes to get that instrumentation clean by the ifus so how would you know that this instrument or this tray or this cart whatever has been sitting for an extended period of time unless you document it i never heard anybody say anything about documenting it i all i heard was when the truck gets there we need to get it as soon as possible how do we put that in the policy blah 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 blah. but the best thing to do is document it unless there's another issue with documentation and i also heard in that group about um the drivers being certified for transporting soil contaminated instrumentation and you were there come on so what what you're talking about is Amy TIR 109, which 109. is 109. All right, let me write that down. 109 transport of medical devices, and you say, "Hey, I think that's an ST 79." One, ST 79 is a document only made for steam sterilization. Two, it doesn't walk you through all the steps. It's really talking about transporting stuff that has already been sterilized, right? The part that talks about stuff that has been patient used is talking about internal transportation inside the organization. So what um, and and really I give Sue Klasik a lot of uh, a lot of props on this. But HSPA, Sue Klasik, Damon Burke, we started this rally like when we're processing anything sterilized by low temperature, it doesn't have any guidance. When we're processing flexible scopes and transport them, it doesn't have any guidance. So instead of trying to add this information to each one of those documents, we're making a TIR, which is a technical information uh, uh, um, that it really is not a standard, but it gives some guidance about how you should set up your transport system. Now we know in reality, when we talk about our transport system, it's not all people that work at our hospital so or at our facility. So we're using a lot of couriers. And in reality, you're seeing everything from a nice air-conditioned transport uh, van, cargo <laughs> van, to uh, Uncle Jimmy's Jeep 1987 Jeep Cherokee with, with, with a dog cage on one seat. For and, Ranger. Yeah. So... Um, <laughs> Or, or they, yeah, they're putting your trays on the back of a Ford Ranger pickup. And so mm-hmm. it was like, let's bring some recommendations, which is what a TIR is, the R is for recommendation, is uh, to the forefront so that we can have some guidance. Because right now, 
it's like the wild wild west it's like a we we used to use this guy and i'm not gonna say where we we uh i don't i'm not gonna say what we are right i'm not gonna say where this was but there was this one guy who could get it from one of our campuses to another campus across town in a busy metropolitan area of over six million faster than any of those other courier services so we used to use him all the time. And so one day he needed some help because we, we were sending like a Bovi machine over, right? So we needed uh, some help. He pulled his Toyota Corolla from 1983 up. And he's like, yeah, just lay it down in there. And that was the first time I thought, maybe all these couriers aren't as trained, equipped, required as we think. I had another situation like 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 you were talking about with the flexible scopes um, that we were doing a flexible scope for all these outlying clinics. Mm -hmm. And when they had to when they had to be repaired, we would have to pay for them. And then we would have to, you know, kind of like debit the accounts of the clinics that they were paid for. So we had to make sure it was like seven one 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 nine is it was was from this clinic and not from that clinic because you know the clinics were like is that our scope and so we had the um we had the stores rep come in and we wanted them to look at the process from use all the way through and he was like did you know when they pick the scopes up they carry them like briefcases well why wouldn't they they don't know what's inside there they don't have any training or requirements no one ever said, hey, only keep these horizontal because the things inside these cost more than your vehicle. And so they would have three or four of them under their arm and, and put them in. And so those are the things like right now, as we stand, there is that there, there is nothing wrong with that. Right. Because we don't have in writing. Well, this is what you should do. And this is what what you should do. This is the information that you require from these couriers. And so that's what we're attempting to do. And TIRs are never perfect. So when it comes out, it's not gonna be the, the solution to all your things. Uh, as you're talking about with documentation, we don't have a stopwatch that we could put on each each um, each transportation bin. But at some point, we have to start the process of putting some infrastructure and rules in place. Because people get confused Certification is going to tell you the principles behind what you're doing and kind of some how to's of how to do it. But Amy, the reason why you need to consult Amy, Amy is going to tell you the rules, regulations. And as 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 they say in uh, Friday, the principalities of what you're doing. Right. Like like you can have all the certifications, but if you're not familiar with Amy, you could be doing something technically wrong or 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 against a standard. So we're just trying to establish some rules and guidelines um, to prevent from what Melinda said, uh, crazy <laughs> stuff like golf carts tipping over and all the trays flipping out of them. That would be crazy. Hey, emergency, we need somebody from SPD to come and build these trays back up because they're all over the, the front lawn. Um, <laughs> and, and Amy is is provides specifically TIRs are great at providing guidance. Thank you, Melinda, for that key word. Trying wondering why you're not here in the group. Did you? Yeah, hey, yes, Melinda, yes. You, 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 you got to put that link out. We need Melinda to Oh, jump. guys, guys, guys. Um, The link to get on the show is in your LinkedIn page. It's right there. Look in your comments. It's on your Facebook if you're watching. And it's also on youtube so swing over to youtube you see that comment hit it and get on stage lindsay easy for you i believe it was oh no i think he got it i think it's t uh it's 109 i was i think i was in wg42 no all the time. He, he, i'm lindsay, all confused now so lindsay is technically correct <laughs> the work group for TIR 109 is work group 40. So uh, yeah, Lindsay is technically correct. And, and part of what we want to do at Advantage is we want to be that voice 
for all the people with great ideas like you dinar but you don't need our help you're already a big timer but for oh, the people wow. who are not big time podcast influencers, that's for uh, lindsay thank you so but but really because i remember i had a bunch of ideas but i didn't have enough money to join in and what we're doing at advantage is we are providing three internship positions that will allow you to join our team discuss documents contribute to documents uh to be to be a part of these uh amy meetings so that you will be a big timer like denard and 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 just give us your feedback so that we can implement it a big timer like me yeah 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 oh, so Liz, hey, did, you, did you make any comments on 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 tir 109 what what's not in there that we need to make sure is in there and, and what's in there that 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 uh, doesn't make sense because we're 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 coming around that corner we want to get that tir out so that we can stop people from having golf clubs golf carts <laughs> and, and golf and, carts and, and, and all and that good stuff eight carts down in a fort ranger these are all things that really happen the Cherokee uh, too. So, Lindsay, what 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 did you what what did you hear? What did you think? What did you see? What do we need to do? What can we do? Temperature to tracking and transport. Temperature. Why do we check the, uh, track the temperature, Lindsay? Transport of clean or soiled? Temperature tracking is is a controversial thing. I want Melinda to to come in and comment on that. Oh man. <laughs> But be, <laughs> but before Melinda comes and comments, guys, if you're going to track something, right, there is a shoe that lets you comfortably walk away from contamination, right? We know you spend your entire shift on your feet and need a healthy shoe that can be easily decontaminated. All Cal Zero shoes are designed to keep you moving and can be machine washed and disinfected with bleach. Cal Zero, a new type of footwear that meets the changing needs of the medical environment. Using an innovative co-polymer rubber compound to create a product that is sterilizable, autoclavable, and anti-static, and extremely comfortable for people standing for long hours. Additionally, Cal Zero Classic can be sterilized using an autoclave at your facility in your sterile processing department. Cal Zero has been around since 1983 and is here to wash away your worries every step of the way. Their mission is to provide comfortable, easy to clean footwear made to treat your feet. So guys, hop on to calzero.com and grab yourself a shoe. And don't forget, we have the code, the process. You, you put that in on checkout and you will get $17.99 discount. All right, so let me put the that's link. A, that's um, a good deal. And, and, and although I'm not endorsed by CalZero, that does bring up another question. We got to bookmark the, the, the TIR because uh, Melinda made a comment and, and Lindsay made a comment. But, okay, all right. The, we have a lot of people that wear tennis shoes in, in, or sneakers in, in uh, sterile processing. And that's really, that's up to them. It's not illegal. Um, <laughs> but but what, I, what I ask is for those of us who either travel or, or go to other hospitals for audits or work at, from one hospital to the other one, tell me how you, you ensure that those tennis shoes are disinfected before your next use. You don't. If it looks clean, it must be clean. Well, I mean, but the very nature of tennis shoes is that whatever aerosolization, whatever half disinfection, enzymatic, blood droplets, body fluid droplets, you can't clean those out. And then you're going to take them to your washer at home that averages 128 degrees and you think you're going to you're going to kill uh, microorganisms. If you can't see it, it's clean. Well, that, that, that's what we pretend. So, I mean, whether it's Cal Zero or somebody else, 
let's think about as a profession. Uh, listen again, if you just work at one facility, wear those those contaminated tennis shoes uh, over and over again. Fine, go with that. But why not get a, a shoes that either at the end of your shift, at the end of your shift, man, you spray those things, grab one of those sandy wipes, wipe it down. You are assured that it is uh, organism free because that's what that's what they're designed for. You can't do that with your tennis shoes. So anyway, back to the main topic. Back to the main topic, guys. So we're talking about transport with Miss Lynn Zay and Melinda. So yeah, I, I kind of figured she was talking about um, the uh, clean transportation. Um, so, so here's the only I'm gonna play devil's advocate. I'm gonna play devil devil's advocate, and I'm gonna say what I said the last time we were in a work group. So we need a temperature track something that was just at 270 degrees for <laughs> for 30 minutes for an hour and, a, and 15 minutes. Beg your pardon. I'm I'm asking. So right, what are you asking? It something the 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 tray the peel pot whatever we're talking about was just in a sterilizer that never dipped below 250 degrees and was mostly at somewhere in the 270s for an hour and a half and we need to monitor the temperature in somebody's car i don't think anybody's car is going to surpass that 270 uh during that transport period so that's just my devil's advocate lindsay i you you you're on a roll and i know that's probably not <laughs> here but but I, i'm just asking um mm. but, but, a huge that is a huge part of 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 the discussions the back and forth discussions that was an incredibly huge and, and we need contributors right i think the um the question is and lindsay you may have it different at your organization and and, and melinda referred to it when we're talking about realistically how these things are transported who you see i got it close to the camera and said who Mm. What are we talking about who's going to monitor this temperature? The the guy with the pickup truck, or are we going to be responsible for buying temperature monitors? Because you know they love to give SPD extra budget money, right? So we're going to buy temperature trackers, and then we're going to get the temperature trackers back, and then we're going to have how many how many loads do you run a day? How many things? Do we need 12 temperature trackers? Do we need 14? Do we need 112? And then how do we account for getting them back? So let me give you a scenario. Um, old man Johnson is driving the truck, right? He picked up some priority trays, need to get turned around. He's picking them up, bringing them back to the main facility. There's an accident. There's traffic. Um, old man Johnson's like, you know what? I could make it, I could make it, I could make it. So he takes a, a shortcut, right? So the shortcut ends up being another roadblock. There's construction, you know, they're digging a big pothole for some reason. There's a there's a water main, a water main break. So he shortcuts them to another hour, and the OR is calling, hey, the, the trays are on the way. The trays are on the way. Okay, we have an add-on. Um, it's a trauma. We try and get those trays back. So if the temperature went to your over your set parameters, should Mr. Johnson, old man Johnson, drive that truck back to be reprocessed or take it to the facility for use? Well, first of all, Lindsay um, clarified her 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 request. She mm -hmm. said uh, the temperature of the sterile storage after the sterilization from facility to another facility so uh, we, we we got that yeah. um i think and i think we all think that the the real danger of transport is non-sterilized or non-high level disinfected items right because studies show time after time um that uh extended time and an extended temperature uh increases the the chance of bio burden uh, bio bio 
film and makes bio burden harder to remove, right? That's just a scientific fact. So when we're talking about transporting, um, and I don't want to say dirty or contaminated because that starts a whole nother argument because I'm like, you guys let people just take stuff off the mail stand and put it in the truck. I don't know what you're doing. Like, I don't care how small the clinic is. We need those things rinsed out before they come down here. We don't need an enzymatic. You don't have to have an ultrasonic. You don't have, we, 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 we got to do something before they, they get over here. Uh, but it, that that's where the risk is of, of items that have not been uh, cleaned or high level disinfected or sterile. So, there is, there is a risk there, right? But then again, you're talking about smaller, less resource facilities providing temperature tracking capabilities. Um, and, and, and I just don't know how to figure that out. I don't have all the answers, but I know the wound clinic on 57th Street cannot afford a single uh, temperature monitor. Um, and then, you know, so who who who, who does that? Um, and then Melinda talked a little bit about condensation. We know condensation is real. We know that condensation after cooling is not as real as, as that. So uh, that's a, a fight that Melinda and I fight all the time about condensation and uh, well about uh, uh, room temperature cooling uh, versus patient use, but in, a, in, a, in sterile storage or transport, you got to let it cool uh, to to room temperature. All right. So what if uh, Jose gets a, uh, no, 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 Jose Johnson? What if Mr. Johnson gets a flat? What if his AC goes out on the truck and you have to fly in a part or other part is on back order? Will you still use that truck? Does it matter? What <laughs> if it goes, what if you're in Minnesota and it, it's like below freezing? Um you know, should you be transporting trays if you can't hit that truck up to, you know, your humidity and temperature requirements? So what what I can say right now is there are a lot smarter people than me <laughs> doing the research. Right, right. Because this is an area that has been under research. We don't have the science. We have the knowledge and we know the common sense. But we need some science. If X equals, you know, Y. So, <clears throat> and and Melinda is correct. And that's why I'm glad to see the contributions by Lindsay. Temperature monitoring is a hot, no pun intended. If you know <laughs> Melinda, you know that the pun was intended. Like Melinda, you can't make a pun. You can't sit there and say, how can I make a pun and then say no pun intended? That's that's not how no pun intended work. But she's right. It is a big issue. <laughs> it is. It's it's a hot topic. <laughs> it's a hot topic. You got it? You get it? It's a hot topic. No. No. Okay. But, and and, and here, here's the thing to remember. We're not going to get it all perfect on this TIR. What we're going to start to do is build a framework of what you have to do and what you expect, primarily from, you know, let's be honest, very few facilities are transporting their own stuff. The vast majority of stuff is being um, transported by somebody who has only a loose affiliation with uh, the facility that's really concentrated on them getting paid for their services. So we have to make sure that our contracts, when we say, okay, if you want to be our courier, you have to do this kind of training. And um, that was one of the things that um, kind of, if you've heard my voice before, that's where you heard uh, Angie, uh, Angela Luella, Angie and I speak up the most because sometimes we're talking into a silo um, that's not really talking about what's really going on. Mm. So, um, I agree with what you're saying. There are a lot of people smarter than you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, 
Yeah, but yeah, I understand how the how the Amy process goes. You don't you don't get to batting a hundred on your first day. You kind of you know build it up. You build you you build up your percentages. You see where it it's lacking based on the practices or the recommendations, and then you plug those holes up until you have a nice slate, so to speak. So. I yeah, definitely that, understand that, um, the pro- yeah, the pro- yeah. I understand the process, pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So guys, if you really wanted to lend your voice to the show, you could have went went to YouTube and hit on that link, that StreamYard link, and you'd be on the show now. You could have went to LinkedIn and hit that StreamYard link and you'd be on the show right now. You could have went to Facebook and hit that StreamYard link and be on the show right now. Why aren't you doing it? Because you're scared. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but don't forget. <laughs> um, so, but guys, I just want to remind you, we're having our 12-hour marathon on Sunday. Um everybody's gonna be here, there everybody you think you know you might know you think no there's sarah sarah's gonna be there if sarah's gonna be there you gotta tune in so we have our 12 hour marathon starting 12 p.m eastern time um on sunday so make sure you join in danny is gonna be on there melinda is gonna hey, be sarah. on there hey, danny. the Mid's gonna be on there we gotta get Lindsay on there. Oh, we she, gotta get Lindsay on. Lindsay, what's going on? She came with some hot fire. That, hey, listen, she came with some hot fire. She might not have jumped on the recording, but she she came in with some some hot fire. I like that. So Lindsay, send me a message, and I'll 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 hook you up, and you'll come on Sunday between twelve p.m. Eastern time and twelve. We're going to midnight, so we're celebrating Stellar Processing Week. We're going to give away some nice little prizes. We're going to have some education on there. We're going to have some folks you haven't seen in a while and hear from them. You know, we're going to, it's going to be, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Jen, oh, Janine's going, I think she's going, what did she tell me? She told me I can't make it. I'll be at work. That's what Janine told me. Yep. She well, told me I can't be there. I'm at work all day. Listen, listen at work. Listen at work. Janine will be at work, so she can't make it. But I'll tell you, know, Janine, message me, and I'll hook you up. Oh, Dante, you got to get Dante on, man. You yeah, no, Dante's on. Dante's on. Okay, okay. I'm, I, I told you everybody's on except Lindsay. So Lindsay, give me a shout. <laughs> <laughs> So Dante is on. Um, who else is who else is on? Like I'm trying to um, figure out who I don't have on so that I could invite them. But you know, when you get older, the memory slowly goes away. Man, so, you don't even have a single gray hair. Just just for men, keep the gray <laughs> away. I remember okay. you were saying something about my gray and my beard. I was like, "It's a lot." Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't want. Uh, I don't want. I don't, I don't want to be a Santa yet. I don't want to be Santa <laughs> yet. I, yeah, give me a, give me a few more years, and I'll you know do the whole Santa thing and the gray and all that. But just for men, it works. So, um, but shout out to my sponsor, Sterile education download the app it has all the podcasts on there it has educational opportunities on there it's a nice little app stop downloading those video game apps and those uh medical diagnosis apps what are the apps that really you know those little meme apps stop downloading those apps and download a sterile processing app (laughs) it's called sterile education just go to your google 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 app store yeah google app store or your apple what they call the apple one the apple app store the app store the real app store no no that's it i mean that's like yeah if you an android user go to the google right apple is a free android user go to the apple store and throw that (laughs) thing in the trash apple is a fruit android is a network okay get that straight um (laughs) 
So guys, it was a good time talking with you, Jameed. Um, I'm trying to, you know, work on my, there's an app for that. Whoa, whoa. So guys, everybody I think I know I can remember in the back of my mind will be on the show. You know, let me see. Uh, Jesse Lopez, Lopez is going to be on there. Oh, let wow. me just name, name drop a little bit. Sharon Green Golden is going to be on there. All right. All right. Who else is going to be on there? Let me name drop. Um, what about Ebo? Ebo is going to be on. Come on. I told you everybody's going to be on there. Ebo okay. is going to be on there. Who else? Who else? Um, mm. you, got, you got Sarah coming, but you don't have Dave coming? Who? Dave Jagrosi? Oh, oh. Oh man, Dave, I'll uh, send you a little uh, thing. Seth Hendy is coming on. I love to hear Seth. Guess who else is coming on? Who? Sharon. Another Lindsay. Ah! <laughs> That's great. That's great. So man, you have got another a Lindsay lineup. coming on. So um. So that might that might mean like nobody will notice if I'm watching football while I'm on. No, I'll be like, no. oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's gonna be oh, it's Adam gonna be on there. Adam. That, yeah, that's that's great. That's great. Yeah, Adam Okada is gonna be on there. Who else? Who else? Who else? Man, there are so many names I can't remember. Um. We have knowledge and nonsense on here, Miss Sharon Combs. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yep, yep, yep. Um, is, is Lewayne, you gonna get Lewayne on there? Oh, uh, Lewayne, Lewayne had a had a um, conflicting up arrangement. He couldn't. He what couldn't. about Arlene? Arlene Bush is gonna be on here. Come on, man! What kind of thing is that? What about Brian? Um, um, what about Brian? Brian. I don't have his information. I was trying to get him, but I'll ask through um I'll ask through Arlene. I, and I Miss I got you. I got you. You got me? Yeah, I got you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Send me his info. And um Mo Nick's gonna be on there. Who? Bo Nick's Mo the Nick. quarterback for Oregon? Mo Nick, there's only one Mo oh, Nick, Mo a Nick. comedian. No, uh, I'm just another comedian. She is a comedian too. She's very yeah, funny, but Monique she, Jelps. She had a little humor. Her, her. She had a little humor in her uh her presentation. Yeah, she's I like her. Well she's funny. She's hard not to like. I like her. I like her. I like her. And we have a couple of podcasters that might be on there too. I don't know if you know them. A couple guys who started a podcast a, a couple of years ago. Oh yeah, I, I I love to see the growth. I love to see the growth. Yeah, there are a couple. Yeah, there are a couple dudes. One of them has a beard. I don't know when he's gonna cut that, but you know, he's <laughs> gonna be on there. <laughs> <laughs> he wears a red hat at times. Y'all may know who I'm talking about. You know, I mean. Well, I mean, he's, he's lucky that I had a I, I had a I was had to do an audit. Because my beard would be much, much, much longer. <laughs> and so I see him and Sean debating about the beards. And I'm like, uh -huh. I mean. I was trying it too, you know. But after a while, I was like, eh, this thing is, is taking too long. I'm going to do one of those fake beard implant things. I'm going to uh -uh. shave it and get it glued on. And, <laughs> you know, yep, yep, yep. I see, I, I see them on um, Instagram all the time. You shave it clean, you line it up nice, you get a full mane. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 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 This, With this the coloring and everything. Around. It looks oh, real. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're doing that. Gonna, they're doing that for really. dreads. They do that for dreads. They, they do, do it. Yeah, that this is all fake too. This is all fake. They do that for locks a lot. And I like, do it every two weeks. This is all fake. I, Let me peel it back for you guys to see. When I when I was growing up, locks was something that was hard that you had to earn now you could go in like this and come out like you <laughs> but guys i really want you all to come out shout out to my sponsors calzero.com sterile education and um 
I really want you to see you guys on Tuesday. I'll put be putting out a little bit of content throughout the week so you guys could see the past marathon, get some clips. Um, I put up uh, some cuts out there from um, Tanya Lewis. Um, I put that on um, LinkedIn. Oh, I also put that, a clip that, on that, there from Jesse girl, Lopez. Girl. And my next clip is going to be from Lindsay Brown. She had some good information when she came on last year. So I'm going to keep rolling the clips out so you guys get familiar with how the marathon goes. And we'll have some fun on Sunday. So, guys, just, you know, show up. Come on. Just log on. Stream it to your TV. Get some popcorn. Relax. It's not, you know what I mean? You know? It's cool. It's okay. It's okay. You can do it. You can do it. So, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Have a wonderful evening, and um, I'll see you on Sunday. All right, now. All right. And when, where are we going to see you, Jamid? Sunday also? Yeah. I might have on a football jersey. Well, oh, uh, uh, Eagles? The only undefeated team in the NFL. Well, y'all haven't really played anybody, but y'all do. Y'all oh looking good. man, yeah, you see the hate. haters. I'm not gonna hate. I, not gonna hate. It, y'all looking good. Y'all looking good. Yeah, we're looking good. We're looking good. We came down from 14 down last week. You know, yeah. we yeah. we yeah. beat a couple. You know, iffy teams, but everybody was over five over over 500 except you know for the first game. But you know, we beat a couple a couple okay teams. We're looking good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I like Jalen Hurts. I want him to succeed. So, yeah, we have some injuries. We might lose this week coming, but it's all right. I'll be on the marathon all day long. So if so we lose, I won't know. You, you won't even notice. You I won't even know. know. I'll stay positive. So, guys, thank you for joining in. I did share the link on all platforms so that you guys will have an opportunity to come down. Shout out to Omar in the audience. Appreciate it, brother. And, guys, we'll see you on Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. Peace. Peace.